Welcome to Crash Shot. Brad here. Today I am joined by my girlfriend, Kat. Hi. We are making a kitchen knife. It's going to be a sand my billet. Let's get started. All right, so for this blade, we're going to be using five layer sand my. This is a billet that I forged up the other day with my brother, and today Kat and I are going to be turning it into a kitchen knife. We're gonna start off by lighting the propane forge. We are not using the coke forge outside today because it's too windy. Now that it's up to heat, we put the billet inside. I wanna give a quick shout out to my friend and subscriber, Mike Dipple. He sent me some awesome rounding hammers and we're gonna be using them today. Okay, we're just spreading out the steel a little bit. This is Kat's first time at the anvil, so we're just getting her used to swinging some hammers. We're shooting for about an eighth inch in thickness on this blade. The billet's pretty large right now. We're gonna go ahead and drop the thickness a little bit. We are switching over to the cross pin hammer. This will allow us to spread out the width of the billet, in turn providing us with a wider blade. The peen on these hammers are designed for drying and spreading. Striking the billet perpendicular will draw out the length and striking it parallel will draw out the width. Switching back over to our rounding hammers, we're going to remove any marks left from our cross peen hammer. We are making sure the billet has an even thickness all the way down before drawing out the tang. This is a hidden tang knife. That means that the width of the tang needs to be dropped drastically so that it can fit inside of a handle. To do this, we are going to be upsetting the side of the billet. I'm being careful not to cause any rollovers or cold shuts. These can easily happen when you hammer steel on its side. So every time I hammer on the side of the steel, I wanna make sure that I lay it down on its face and flatten it out before I continue. Because we're making a drop point blade, we're going to be working in both of the corners to develop a point. And now, with the tang drawn out, you can really start to see the knife take its shape. To cut down on grinding time, we're going to be pounding in our bevels, and this is also going to give us a little bit more width on the blade. Pounding in bevels forces your blade to curve back towards its spine, so before pounding in bevels, I like to curve the blade away from its spine. Using a flattening tool takes out pits and warps and helps to guarantee a flat and straight blade. We're eyeballing the blade against the anvil to make sure that it's flat. To anneal the blade, we're heating it up and plunging it into a bucket of vermiculite. This forces the blade to cool down slowly, making the steel soft and easy to grind. Now that our blade is cooled off, we're going to sketch a design and grind the profile. Based on Brad's drawings, we're removing all of the material outside of the lines, and we're going to start by using an angle grinder.
Once the heavier material is removed, we will ease up to the lines on the belt grinder. I'm using a file to clean up the blade where it's going to junction with the handle. You guys might remember this device from a past video. This is my knife grinding jig. If you are interested in making one, I'm going to link the video in the description of this one. Now that the blade is ready for its bevels, it will receive a flat grind at the belt grinder. Once the first side is close to fully ground, we flip it over and do the other side. And I'm making sure not to bring this blade to a sharp edge because when we quench it, we don't want it to be too brittle. And you can see here that we've left a little bit of meat on the bone. In order to pin the blade to the handle, we are drilling a hole in the tang. We're using a slow speed and cutting oil to help with this process. Without annealing the blade, it would be very hard to drill through the steel. And we've chamfered the hole to help the pin glide into place a little easier. We're firing up this forge again, getting this blade prepared for quench. Just throwing on the maker's mark real quick. And now that we've added some heat to the blade, we have a small preview of what the final pattern is going to look like. We are normalizing the blade and it helps to do this in a dark area. It's the process of heating up a blade and allowing it to lose all of its color. It equalizes the grain structure and it's really important to do this to Damascus steel. And we're just gonna run this through a couple normalizing cycles, making sure to hit non-magnetic heat each time. By quenching a scrap piece of steel, Cat is preheating the oil. Now in for the quench. I'm being sure to keep it moving until it stops smoking. And I'm just going to lightly polish the blade before temper to save myself some time down the road. And I'm being careful not to overheat the blade at this point, so I'm dipping it in water every couple passes. Here's a quick look at the blade before tempering. And now into the oven. While we wait for the blade to temper, we're gonna cut up some handle material. We are using red oak, turquoise, and black G10. To attach the handle components, I'm using Loctite's five minute heavy duty epoxy with equal parts resin and hardener. Once the epoxy is cured, we square up the block. Using a speed square, we're finding the center of the block. There, we will drill a hole to fit the width and length of the tang. Any void space will be filled with epoxy. I'm using a piece of G10 as a cap or bolster to the rest of the handle material. This will be filed to accept the size of the tang.
Now that we have a tight fit and everything's lined up, we drill a hole in the handle material to line up with the hole in the tang. This is where our pin will be in place. We are rough shaping the handle so we have less to do when everything is glued up. It helps to draw some basic guidelines that you can sand up to on the belt grinder. The slack belt makes it easy for us to round the profile. Now we need to polish the edge. It's always a good idea to do this before you glue up the handle. We'll be hand sanding up a series of grits, starting around 220 and moving up to at least 1000. I like to clamp the blade so that it overhangs the workbench. Using a piece of wood underneath will help to prevent any warps or bends. Using light pressure and some cutting oil, we start moving up grits. Spending a lot of time on the lower grits makes the higher grits go by a lot faster, but if you want really good results, this is generally a time-consuming process. And I actually found one small delamination up towards the maker's mark during this process. Delaminations happen when steel starts to separate in a forge weld. Because of its size and its position, it would never compromise the integrity of the knife, but because of it, I would never sell it. Stay tuned for the end of this video, we're going to announce a giveaway for this blade. We are edging this in ferric chloride to bring out the sand mai pattern. We are using soap and acetone to make sure the blade is grease-free. After about a 10 minute soak in the acid, we are cleaning the blade off and we'll repeat this step once more. After the acid etching, it's time to reveal its final pattern. We'll do this by hand sanding the high spots with a high grit. And there's a close look at the five layer sand my pattern. Again, we used 1080 and 15 and 20. It's time to attach the handle. We are using Loctite epoxy just like before. To ensure that the handle is completely filled with epoxy, we are using a heat gun to help it settle into the hole. Once the tang is in place, it's time to pin it all together. We are using a drill bit because we ran out of eighth inch pins. Now that the epoxy is cured, we can start shaping the handle. The majority of the shaping is done at the slack belt. We've taped off the blade to ensure we won't mess it up in the process. We're starting with about an 80 grit belt at first, and then moving on to 120 and then 220. To create a darker finish, we're going to be burning the handle before moving on to hand sanding. Moving on to hand sanding, we are going to bring it up to 320 grit before we soak it in boiled linseed oil. After about a three hour soak, we are going to sand off any raised grain and bring it up to about 400 grit. Now we're going to finish this and buff it out with Woodsman Wax. This stuff works great. It's basically a spreadable beeswax with a few other oils added. 
And there's the handle all finished up. Now we just need to move on to sharpening. We are adding a secondary bevel with a file and then moving on to a diamond file. And then finally we repolish the edge and move on to a leather strap. And there's the blade all finished up. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was my first time making a knife, so I hope you liked the way that it turned out. And like we said before, this knife is up for a giveaway. You can check that out at the Timberly Tool and Trade Instagram. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop them down below. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.